This segment on Baylor Athletics on Sikkim 365 Radio is brought to you by Richard Carr Buick GMC Cadillac. Learn more at richardcarr.com. Here's David Smoke and Paul Catalina. Baylor football coach Dave Aranda with me, David Smoke on Sikkim 365 Radio. Do you ever really know who you have as a team or what your team is until they play their first game or they get tested the first time? No, I think so. I think you know the what's what's inside of them and you know I think coaches see the greatness inside of players. I think um, you know I think what ends up what happens sometimes is that there's never really just a a scent and so you know the greatest uh, player development is really coach development, so that you know, so that when things are hard or things don't go as planned and all this other thing, the coaches can um, can really be better because you end up coaching who you are. And it's in those critical moments where anything that was built up when the sun was shining and the days are 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 happy and bright that are lost when the storm hits, you know. And so I think the the ability to kind of weather all of that and to really almost really kind of invite it uh, because that is where we grow and then kind of, you know, um, to uh, meet people where they're at and kind of build them up, I think, builds a better you and builds a better, you know, um, builds a better person. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I think you know, you can see the greatness in people, but... I think a lot of times it gets lost um, because the scheme and the ball and everything kind of takes over. Speaking of scheme, you have a lot of players who are moving into roles that are much more prevalent than they've been because you lost some great players, but you have a lot of them coming through the system. Do you change your schematic or how you look at things based on who now is up next? Yes. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I think think offensively that's the case. I think we've got a fair – a fairly strong tight end room. And so I think you'll see more of them on the field. I think you have a, a really talented young receiver room. So I think they'll be kind of a maturing into more of them on the field um, as it goes. And I think, you know, defensively you see a really strong kind of front seven. And so you're going to see more um, – um, more ways, not only that they can kind of hold the back end together, but more ways we can kind of let them loose. And then I think in the in the back end, there's some youth and some really talented people. So there's going to be a lot more true zone stuff early, with uh, the ability to show uh, or to work to show the ability to play tighter man coverage. And so I think all of that is based upon yeah, you know who you have, what's possible, what best fits us, you know what is. What is the nature of us, you know, and those things? A young player who hasn't played much, and then they get their first shot and they make a play. Is there anything, not not more beautiful than that, but seeing the light come on and seeing them make a play when people aren't sure they can? Yeah, it is. It is really pretty cool. I think, um, you know, the... The journey that it takes, like winning at every level is a thing. So winning in a walkthrough is something. Winning on the first day of fall camp, that practice is something. Winning on the first day of fall camp, padded practice is something. Winning on a scrimmage in McLean, crossing the bridge is something. You know, winning in the first game of the season is something. And so, you know, the you have to, to manage the noise. You have to manage the, the, the volume from outside in. You have to manage the, you know, the battle with perfectionism that a lot of guys have. And all of those things are, are real things. You know, that's really the, the game within the game. And I think as coaches, to try to understand that and to keep the game simple, like we talked about in just a while ago, you know, simple ain't easy. It's because of all these other things that are real things that generally don't get addressed and and so I think you have to kind of build towards it so that when you do have success um, early it's pretty cool. Last year you I asked you about the difference between the fronts in the SEC compared to maybe the Big 12 and obviously you have a tremendous front you made 
I believe what you told me is in the SEC, they just let them run. They just go. And it's more scheme oriented here. Do you, are you getting closer to what you have up front to what you saw in the SEC? I'd like to, I'd like to think so. You know, we're going to have to do that um, in, in game situations. Um, I thought towards the end of last year, there were times where we were doing that. And so I think, you know, for this year, um, to be tested continually to where we don't have to, to um, you know, see a blitz on, on Sunday and put it into the game plan for the next week and all of these things that um, aren't really it, you know. But to do it to where, hey, this is a technique that we've worked on since spring, since summer, since fall, and now it's showing up in the most competitive pressurized situation. That one, that's the ideal. But I think, you know, success can get in the way of that, right? Just like failure can. And so I think f that would be ideal for us, but to, to do, we, ha we cl clearly have to do it first. Blake Shapin, your guy, he's the number one quarterback. Does he have a swagger, but it's controlled? How, how, do you, how would you define him? Yeah, he's a, um, he's a reserved, reserved guy, and um, I appreciate that about him. You know, he studies, you know, the, the, I'm doing one-on-ones with the team, and guys will come up and they'll, they'll say how they were in Blake's um, apartment kind of uh, hanging out over the weekend, and he's got, like, playbooks and drawings all sprayed across his floor. <laughs> and it's kind of like, um, you know, I don't know, from the sounds of it, it's kind of um, like that. What was the Russell Crowe Beautiful Mind stuff mm -hmm. going? And so that's cool. You know, I think there's, there's that. He does have uh, a real strong hunger. And um, to have the guys see that, you know, we're in – so – when we're practicing, we'll, the offense is kind of right behind the re remainder of the offense. The, the, everyone but the 11 that are practicing at that moment are behind, about 10 yards or so behind the offense. And the guys are cheering and clapping their hands, give, try and give some energy. But there's times when Blake makes these throws, whether it's the arm angle or you know the release point or just the velocity on the throw, where guys are going, oh, did you see that? Sometimes it's like, did you hear that? And so I think like those, those things combined with the the studying part, right, and not saying a lot, I think are really cool ways to go about it. I shared an email or two with Dr. Lynch, and I know Dave Wilson wrote an article about you a week or two ago, brought him up, and he's going to come on with us a little bit later on. You've mentioned this before, that you've spent money when you really didn't have it to go pick the brains of people you it all paid off it it seemed like i mean how do you know when you should or shouldn't when you could or not do that that's a good question um yeah i remember so i was at i was at texas tech and we were in um it was a sports psychology class and um probably the thing i was probably at the most uh, while I was at Tech was the Barnes and Noble bookstore. And so I'd be w walking up and down and the people knew who I was and, you know, Dave, nothing new. And then they got to where I would like, I would say, hey, can you find this? And they're finding books and stuff. And so, um, you know, that was, I remember reading, reading all of his books. And, um, you know, it was, and I think it eventually became a book that, that, I think it was Mark Lockbaum was the name of the professor at Tech. And so he actually used that book for that class, Thinking Body, Dancing Mind, in his class. And so we were having that. So it's just, yeah, it was a cool time. But to, for me, it's like to venture away from that and kind of get lost in ball. And that's always the thing. It's the stuff that we're going to fight right now. Because it's such a, it's such a um, you know, you think about the power that ball gives you. You think about the control that it gives you. You think about the blaming and the shaming opportunities that it gives you. It's a drug, really. And so to, you know, to lose, to fall, to, to get lost in it, and then to come back to all the stuff that you were into before, and to find out that's really you is kind of cool. When was the last time you lost your temper? Long time. Yeah, I don't know. It's been a long time. I keep thinking maybe something will do it, but no, it hasn't. It hasn't happened. I don't know. 
is that part of what you've learned? Uh, I think I was control kind of what you can control and all. Of I think I was kind of born that way, probably. Um, and then, you know, I just think, I mean, typically, people. I was talking to someone about this the other day, where I think typically people like me, you know, we get. Um, murdered before we get to this seat. We don't make it this far. <laughs> We're kind of stomped and beaten to death on the side of the road, right, by others that are just more, I don't know, forceful, assertive, you know, quick to judgment, you know, loud, powerful. And so I just think, you know, to kind of take something that was kind of a weakness and try to use, try to show it as, you know, there's power and weakness is, um, I don't know, it's that's part of what this is. Did any of your players read that article about you? And did anyone comment about it that maybe they learned something about you that they maybe didn't know, or did you even like get feedback? I did not. Now, I've gotten some feedback on it from uh, recruits and their families, mm -hmm. but with our players, I have not. How many hours of sleep, on average, do you get during football season compared to off-season? Um, there's less in the season. I think during the off-season, though, it's usually I'm up here pretty early, too. And the difference is um, I can use, I'm usually getting shut eye a little bit earlier in the off-season. We're in-season. You know, you're kind of getting it on both ends. But I think, you know, that is generally for us early in the week. And try and we try to by Wednesday kind of tamper that down. And I think, you know, to keep coaches fresh and do all of it is, is a huge part of that. Because I've felt that before to where, you know, four or five cups of coffee before noon isn't <laughs> ideal. <laughs> and sometimes that's, in the past, that's been the only thing kind of keeping you up. And so... I, we try to build a, you know, so the, the Sundays and the Mondays and the Tuesdays are kind of your days. What do you enjoy more, practice or game day? Practice. Yeah, I think, you know, there you can see, I mean, you can, it's, I wouldn't say it's 100%, because um, the, you know, the ball can bounce a bunch of funny ways, mm -hmm. but you can tell if, you know, the attitude's right, if things are hooked up right in practice just by how you're attacking little things. Guys are running on the field, right? Uh, guys that aren't getting reps are focused on the guy getting the reps. Guys are teaching other guys. Right? Um, guys are, the, the effort at the end of practice and the energy is greater than it was in the start. And so when, when you are like that, just that part, you know, cause it's funny because I was, um, um, who is it? Um, there's a coach here visiting uh, this past week, and we were talking about the time at Utah State. And um, I was there for a year, and it was, we had a great season. And um, Gary Anderson was the head coach, his mm -hmm. great friend. And he was telling me, he was asking me about memories, and I and I just told him I remember that you know. I remember I was on the mayonnaise line, so we would we would as coaches we would make sandwiches for the players to eat and I was like the main ace guy the whole time I was there so I knew where to go and I did it and asked, he's, and then he asked me what else do I remember I go oh we'd after games we'd all go to Gary's house and hang out and, and uh, our wives would go and there's a pool and you'd hang out there too and he but it was nothing with games it was nothing I couldn't remember nothing about, yeah mm -mm. yeah and I think it's always that way but I think when you're in it you know your perspective gets so you're looking out of a straw with the pressure and all of it, and so it's just kind of a natural thing. One more thing about football. You have your defense that has this great front seven, the mm -hmm. offense, obviously, with your offensive line and quarterback. How did you manage letting the offense get their legs under them and yet letting Coach Roberts and the defense do what all they want to do with their aggressive, the way they play the game? Well, I, I appreciate that. I think it's, it was great communication between Ron and Jeff. I think really working, and, and they did the work it, to communicate and to, you know, hey, this is kind of where we're at. Um, you know, how do you feel about these blitzes? Yeah, this is great. Or, hey, we want to try to get some shot plays. You know, we'd love it versus this coverage. Yeah, that's good. And just that type of communication, I think, you know, 
so much, so many times in practice, it can turn towards, you know, it's me versus you. And, you know, no one really gives a damn who won the third, you know, day of fall camps, team, team period two. No one remembers and no one cares. You know, what we're trying to do is get guys better. And, and you know, it's me with you. Right, getting you better, you getting me better, and we're both trying to beat what we did yesterday. And I think to see it that way in a longer view is um, sometimes difficult to do because of the the training of the past. You kind of have to unlearn what you've learned. Last question: You look out all this construction, built, growth, arms race in college football. Compare it to two years ago when there was so uh, the cloud of COVID to last year to this year. What do you see? What What do you see when you look out this window? I see a becoming. You know, I think the. You know, I. I, I love driving in and seeing the Welcome Center. Um, you can drive by and see where that basketball arena is going to be and just how cool that's going to be, just in downtown area. And then, you know, I think just the 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 sim the symbol of just continuing to grow, continuing to improve. I think that's just a way cool thing, and that's, um, I can see that everywhere I look. Like your football team. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Baylor football coach Dave Aranda, 365 Sports. Holy cow, has it been a hot summer. You could fry an egg in the bed of a